साइंस ओलंपियाड क्लास सेवन न्यूट्रिशन इन प्लांट्स एंड एनिमल्स न्यूट्रिशन इन प्लांट्स इंट्रोडक्शन A living organism shows seven basic characteristics that differentiate it from a non-living one. These characteristics are called life characteristics because together they ensure that an organism continues to live. Though all living organisms show these characteristics, there are clear differences in the manner plants and animals carry them out. In this chapter, we will learn about nutrition, more specifically nutrition in plants nutrition the term food refers to any substance that can be broken down by chemical processes by the body of an organism to give energy food also includes liquids example juices soups nutrition refers to the entire process of taking in food and drink by living organisms and using it for the purpose of growth and daily activities types of nutrition autotrophic nutrition is shown by plants and involves a process by which living organisms make their own food photosynthesis heterotrophic nutrition is shown by animals and some plants as we shall learn later where organisms take in ready made food ready made food may come from plants fruits vegetables etc or from animals milk meat etc experiment to show that only green plants can photosynthesize place a beaker about 3/4 full of water on a stand and boil the water place the leaf in this water for about 2 minutes this will break down the cell walls take the leaf out and put it in a test tube with 3/4 alcohol place this test tube in very hot water for about 10 minutes as alcohol warms up it will remove chlorophyll from the leaf and make it almost colorless after about 10 minutes remove the leaf and dip it in warm water briefly to soften the leaf now place the leaf on a white tile and add 3 to 4 drops of iodine solution you will observe that only the green portion of the leaf turns bluish black while the white portion does not this shows that starch is present only in the green area of the leaf thus only green leaves can photosynthesize and make food inside a chloroplast thylakoid inside each chloroplast there are stacks of discs each disc called a thylakoid they contain chlorophyll and help to trap sunlight grana the stacks of thylakoids are called grana the light reaction takes place here stroma The grana are arranged in a fluid matrix called stroma. The dark reactions take place here. Heterotrophic nutrition. The classification of heterotrophic plants are shown. Plants called non-green plants are unable to manufacture their own food. Then there are some plants which can manufacture their own food, but the soil in which they grow do not have all the nutrients. So how do these plants obtain their food or the other nutrients they need Such plants depend on green plants or on other living bodies This mode of nutrition is called heterotrophic nutrition and such plants are called heterotrophs Greek heteron is an other and troph nutrition Thus Heterotrophs are organisms that cannot manufacture their own food and have to depend on other plants or animals to obtain energy. Parasitic plants. Parasitic plants absorb food from another growing green plant called the host. Only the parasitic plant benefits from this relationship. Usually, parasitic plants develop special roots called hostoria which penetrate into the tissues of the host plant the prepared food is generally absorbed from the root or the stem of the host plant coscuta dodda mistletoe and apodanthus are common examples of parasitic plants parasitic plants do cause harm to the host plant dodda and mistletoe are serious problems for plants 
Dodder can cover woody plants and cause heavy damage to certain economically important crop plants. Mistletoe can become so abundant on a tree that most of the foliage is of the parasite and not of the host. Scientists believe that parasitic plants rarely, perhaps never, kill the host plant so that the parasite can continue to live off the host. Saprophytic plants Saprophytic plants are usually whitish but can have brightly colored flowers. These plants have no green leaves. Often, they even have no leaves at all. Saprophytic plants live off rotting material. Greek, sapros means rotting and phyton means plant. They grow in places with lots of rotting dead leaves, often in deep shade in tropical forests. Some examples are Indian pipe and coral root. Indian pipe is found commonly in Asia and throughout North America. Coral roots are found in forest environments around the world. Carnivorous plants Carnivorous plants are plants that derive some or most of its nutrients by trapping and consuming animals, mainly insects. Therefore, such plants are also called insectivorous plants. Some of the common ones are the pitcher plants, dorsera, sundew, bladderwort and the venus flytrap. In the pitcher plant, the leaf is modified to form a tubular pitcher-like structure. The inside of the pitcher is lined with downward pointing hair. These hair do not allow any insect to climb back up and escape. The fluid at the bottom of the pitcher contains digestive juices which consume the insect. The California pitcher plant is also called the cobra lily as it resembles a rearing cobra. It has a forked leaf that resembles the forked tongue of a snake. Carnivorous plants The leaves of sundew have tentacles with drops of a sticky substance called mucilage at the ends. Insects get stuck in this substance and become entangled. The mucilage then digests the helpless insect. The trap of the Venus flytrap is a highly modified leaf. On the inner surface, reddish hair to attract insects. There are short, stiff hair called trigger or sensitive hair. When anything touches these hair enough to bend them, the two lobes of the leaves snap shut in less than a second. Symbiotic plants There are certain plants which live with other plant types and share their food resources. Both the types mutually gain from each other. Such relations are said to be symbiotic. Lichens are an association between a fungus and a green algae. The fungus obtains nutrients from the algae and the fungal tissue in turn provides shelter for the algae, allowing it to grow in harsh conditions such as rock surfaces where it would otherwise be destroyed. Certain plants, such as peas, have a symbiotic association with bacteria, such as rhizobium. It converts atmospheric nitrogen into plant-usable forms, example ammonia. The plant, in turn, provides nutrients for the bacterium growth. Nutrition in animals Introduction We see that whatever we or animals eat is either a plant or an animal product. Since we cannot photosynthesize because we lack the green pigment chlorophyll, we have to depend on green plants and other animals for our nutrition. So, our mode of nutrition and that of other animals and of some plants is heterotrophic. Heterotrophic nutrition in animals is of the following four types. Holozoic, saprozoic, parasitic, mutualistic. Holozoic Nutrition Most animals are holozoic. It involves taking in ready-made solid or liquid food substances as a whole. These are broken down in the animal's body into simpler substances that can be easily digested to provide nutrition. Holozoic animals may be herbivores, plant-eating, carnivores, eat other animals, or omnivores, diet having both plant and and animal material. Saprozoic nutrition. 
Many fungi and bacteria feed by saprozoic methods. The cells of the organism dissolve the dead remains of living organisms by secreting chemicals. The soluble products are then absorbed into the cell body. A good example is mushrooms. Parasitic nutrition. Parasites are organisms that for part or all of its life derives nutrition through other organisms called the host. This interaction between the host and the parasite is called parasitism. Parasites are generally smaller than their hosts and absorb nutrients from the host's body fluids. Example, mosquito. Mutualistic nutrition. In mutualistic nutrition, two organisms interact in a manner such that both are benefited. This is also called symbiosis. A very good example of mutualistic nutrition is the association between bacteria called rhizobia and plants belonging to the pea family. Rhizobia make their home in the nodules of the plant roots and obtain food from these plants while the plants obtain nitrogen through them. Nutrition in amoeba. Amoeba are organisms made up of a single cell, usually found in ponds and ditches. Their food consists of the microscopic plants and animals floating in these waters. Ingestion. When amoeba comes into contact with one of these organisms, it sort of flows around the organism forming a cup-shaped projection. This is called a food cup or food vacuole which completely encloses and ingests the food. This mode of nutrition is called phagocytosis, cell eating. Digestion. In amoeba, digestion is very simple and direct. Once a prey is engulfed, certain chemicals called enzymes are released into the food vacuole. Enzymes, along with other digestive juices, break down the food forming a solution. Absorption. The food in solution form is now ready to be absorbed and assimilate. Ejection. Once all the digestible material has been absorbed, the remainder is thrown out of the body. Amoeba does it by forming a vacuole around the waste material, which is then pushed out of the body. Nutrition in humans. Mouth. Food is broken down by the process of chewing. Liver. The liver secretes bile, which plays a vital role in digestion in the small intestine. Gallbladder. The liver connects to the gallbladder and bile is stored and concentrated here before release into the small intestine. Pancreas. This gland secretes bicarbonate and digestive enzymes into the small intestine. The bicarbonate neutralizes the acid from the stomach. Large intestine. Water and useful minerals are absorbed through the walls of the large intestine back into the blood. The remains are formed into feces. Salivary glands. Enzymes produced by these glands break down starches into smaller sugar molecules. Esophagus. It is a long tube connecting the mouth to the stomach. It uses rhythmic wave-like movements called peristaltic movements to move food from the mouth to the stomach. Stomach. The stomach is a large sac-like organ which secretes HCL, enzymes and mucus. This initiates and prepares the food for chemical and enzymatic digestion. Small intestine. It is the longest section of the digestive tube, about 6 meters in length and almost all of the nutrients is absorbed here. Rectum and anus. The rectum stores the feces which is then ingested out of the body through the anus. Types of teeth. Incisors. They are also called biting teeth. They are eight in number, four in each jaw. The incisors are the front teeth and are so called because they help to incise, cut food. They are flat, blade-like teeth. Canines. They are also called tearing teeth. They have very sharp edges and help in tearing the food and are four in number. Premolars. They have broader grinding surfaces and therefore help in chewing and grinding of food. There are eight premolars 
in the human set molars molars are large back teeth having a wide grinding surface and are used primarily to chew food humans have 12 molars human teeth we humans develop two different sets of teeth in our lifetime the temporary set and the permanent set the temporary set this is the set that starts appearing at the age of about 2 and a half to 3 months and completes in about 2 years these teeth are also called milk teeth there are 20 milk teeth in the temporary set front teeth usually erupt when a child is from 6 to 12 months of age second molars between 13 and 19 months old and canines usually erupt at 19 months or older although the temporary set is replaced by the permanent set the temporary set plays a very important role in the proper alignment and spacing of the permanent teeth around the age of 6 the milk teeth start giving way to the developing permanent teeth the temporary set sheds earlier and permanent teeth erupt earlier in girls human teeth the permanent set there are 32 teeth in a permanent set 16 in each jaw adult humans have 8 incisors 4 in each jaw arranged in the middle there are 4 canines 2 in the upper and 2 in the lower behind the canines are the premolars again 4 in each jaw 2 on the left and 2 on the right the molars are found at the back of the jaws behind the premolars they are 12 in number 6 each in the upper and lower jaw 3 on the left and 3 on the right the permanent set is larger in number and size than the temporary set their enamel is thicker though less white in appearance when compared with the milk teeth wisdom teeth wisdom teeth are the third molars which appear between the ages of 18 and 20 they are called wisdom teeth because they appear so late after the other teeth have already erupted in early childhood at the age of 18 you are an adult hence believed to be wiser than you were as a child there are four kinds of tooth namely incisors canines premolars and molars incisors are also called cutting teeth these are four in number present in the front side and have sharp edges they are used for cutting and biting teeth there are four canines on either side and are called tearing teeth they are very sharp and pointed premolars are called cracking teeth they are broad and flat and present next to the canines molars are broader than premolar teeth and used to grind so they are also called grinding teeth 